Hey, it's Adam, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to develop an accurate perception of reality. How to develop an accurate worldview. In this video, I'm going to talk about the skill of meta thinking and why meta thinking is so rare, yet it is becoming increasingly more valuable in our globalizing world. Meta thinking is the thing that is going to help you develop an accurate perception of how the world works. Now, I hope you realize that if you have an accurate understanding of the world, what the world is, what existence is, what reality is, what I am and how my life relates to existence. If you have an, an accurate perception of how this whole thing works, then you are going to be able to make a really big positive impact on the world. You're going to be able to reach your highest potential as a human being. You're going to be able to self actualize your highest potential because as a human being, you have unlimited potential. You have so much potential. Human beings, the only species that we know about that can grow and has, there's no limit to how much you can grow and develop yourself. It's unlimited. But the only way to be able to do that and to reach your highest potential is to develop the skill of meta thinking and to develop an accurate worldview. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I absolutely love studying human psychological development. I like studying the mind, how the mind tricks itself, how the mind deludes itself. And I also like questioning the world, how the world works so that I can build up my own worldview so that it's accurate. Now, you'll notice that almost everyone that's alive thinks that their worldview is the most accurate worldview. And this is completely normal. In order to live as a human being and in order to survive in your life, you need to think that what you're doing is accurate. You need to have a context for what your life is. So you need to have a worldview and you can't think that your worldview is wrong. You have to believe in your worldview. You have to think that your worldview is correct. So most people don't put a lot of time and effort into actually going and self reflecting and questioning their worldview and questioning whether or not their worldview is accurate and questioning how one can develop a more accurate worldview. Now, for some reason, me personally, I am very, very skeptical. I'm extremely open minded. I really don't care about what the truth, I don't care about what the truth is. I don't care whether the truth suits me or serves me or not. I just want to know what it is. I want to know what is true. And this is the, the, the prime goal of philosophy, the prime goal of contemplation, the purpose of meditation and really the purpose of all of life because the purpose of all of life is to raise your consciousness as a being when you raise your consciousness you'll find that everything else in your life just falls right into place the reason why you're chasing material success, the reason why you want to develop your career, the reason why you want a relationship is because if you 
understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have to satisfy your basic survival needs so that you can be in a comfortable position so that you can focus 100% of your time and energy into raising your consciousness. These are the, the top needs in Maslow's hierarchy, the self-actualization needs and the self-transcendence needs. This is what is going to make you the most happy. This is what's going to make you the most fulfilled. And this is the point of all of life is to set yourself up so that you can raise your consciousness and understand what reality is about. Now consciousness, what is consciousness? In this video, I'm going to define it as having an accurate perception of reality. Consciousness is literally awareness. They're interchangeable terms. And awareness means having awareness of what is going on in the present moment. Having awareness of of what the present moment is and how it works. Now, 99% of all people have very, very little awareness. Most of us live our lives on autopilot. Most of us live our lives sleepwalking. Not, for most of your day, you're just trapped in thoughts, trapped in the mundane aspects of life, always thinking about how to accomplish tasks, how to accomplish goals, but very, very few people are able to step outside this little bubble of their life and to observe reality and to observe their thoughts and to observe their life from a higher perspective. And that gets us into the point of meta thinking. Now, what is meta thinking and why is it so essential to your happiness in life? Well, the word meta literally means to go beyond. I, I don't have the actual definition, but I, I Googled it and I think meta literally means to go beyond. So when I talk about meta thinking, imagine this, this level right here is your thinking. This is your mind. This is your everyday state of consciousness. Now, when we do meta thinking, what we're doing is we're basically taking a step back, taking a step up almost and looking down and observing what our thinking is doing. So we're having awareness over our thinking. Does that sound familiar? That's the goal of meditation. Now, meta thinking is extremely rare because it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to take a step back and observe your thinking, to observe yourself objectively. Because your number one goal in your life is to survive. Everything you do is so, is so that you can survive as an organism, including your worldview is skewed and twisted so that it serves your survival. Your worldview does not, you personally, you as a person do not care about the accuracy of your worldview, what you care about is whether your worldview serves you or not. Does your worldview help you make more money? Does your worldview help you get more sex? Does your worldview help you gain respect from others? This is the number one value of most people and almost every human being. Because as Maslow's hierarchy says, you have to solve your survival needs. But as your survival needs begin to become solved, as you are comfortable with the amount of money you're making, 
as you're comfortable with your relationships and you start to solve these survival needs, then you start to move into the self-actualization needs. And now since your survival is solved, now your mind is a lot more open and a lot more free to actually explore reality and to gain a more accurate perception of what reality is. This is what Maslow called needy perception versus being perception. So this is an extremely deep topic. Um, Actualize.org actually made an amazing video that it goes into a lot of depth explaining the difference between needy perception and being perception. But basically needy perception is what happens when you are stuck in a survival state of consciousness, which 99% of people are. And what happens is your mind literally twists the way that you see the world because you always see the world in terms of what's in it for me. Now, being perception is what I'm going to be talking about more in this video, how to develop a being perception, how to, to develop a systemic perspective of the view of the world, how to develop meta thinking, how to develop tier two thinking, how to develop big picture thinking. These are all synonyms for this being perception. And this is seeing the world as it actually is. <clears throat> Now, this is extremely rare, but um, it's also extremely valuable. Your happiness in life depends on whether or not you are able to have a being perception, whether or not you're able to detach from your thinking, detach from your thoughts, detach from your emotions, and view the world impartially. Ah, I have to burp. Well, <laughs> so this skill is extremely rare. The ability to step out from your perspective and to view the world impartially. Okay, so I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just checking out my notes over here. Accurate. Perception is directly related to your quality of life. That's what it says right there. Okay, now, now I'd like to introduce spiral dynamics and Cook Greuter ego development theory. So both of these models were originally introduced to me by Leo Gura from Actualize.org. Uh, his uh, website is some of the best. Has some of the best resources for developing meta thinking. And so as I've spent lots of time, energy, seriously studying spiral dynamics and other human psychology develop, uh, human developmental psychology models, what these models are, they're so cool and they're so profound is they literally map the development of the human psyche. So as the human psyche matures, as it becomes more cognitively complex, there is a predictable set of values that the human psyche moves through. And basically you have a predictable set of values as you develop yourself, as you develop yourself as a human being, this model spiral dynamics has literally mapped um, basically the entire value system of every single person in the entire world. It's extremely profound. And what we learn from spiral dynamics is that there's different stages of human psychological development. Now, certain stages are more simple-minded, uh, they're earlier, they're, they're more, uh, the ego in these lower stages is more contracted, 
there's more fear, they're more fear-based, and the world is seen generally to be a hostile environment. Now, in these lower stages, there is basically no emphasis on having an accurate worldview. But as the stages develop, as we move up the stages, the stages are organized into colors. I'm going to post a, a visual right here on the screen. We got uh, stage purple, stage red, stage blue, stage orange, stage green, stage yellow, and stage turquoise. Now you watching this video are probably just, just because Western society in general is around orange and green and maybe a little, little bit of yellow. It, but most, most of Western society is blue, orange, and green. Now, this little picture is not enough for you to understand the depth and complexity of all of human psychological development, which is why there's a really in-depth video series that was compiled by Leo Gura that I'm gonna put in the description here. And that goes into a lot more depth about spiral dynamics and what it is. It's like, it's almost 15 hours long, the video series, and that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. But I'd like to uh, talk about some of the lessons that you can learn from this model is that as you move up the stages, as you move through blue, orange, green, yellow, turquoise, your perception of the world is becoming more accurate. From low to high, the lower stages are only able to see the world from a couple, from few perspectives. But as you move up, you're able to see the world from more perspectives because ultimately what reality is, is it's ultimately subjective. It's relative. There is no one perspective which is the most accurate. And there is no one perspective which is the best. However, um, there are certain perspectives which are more comprehensive. There are certain perspectives which are more conscious. There are certain perspectives which take into account a wider range of other perspectives. And basically, when you start to move into stage yellow, which is the purpose of this video here, is talking about meta thinking, which is one of the main skills of stage yellow, is the, the ability to think meta, the ability to study a wide range of perspectives, hundreds of perspectives from different worldviews, and to put them together so that they can have an accurate perception of the world to almost triangulate the truth. So obviously no one perspective is ultimately true and absolutely true, but every perspective is partially true and some perspectives contain more truth than others. So spiral dynamics, as we move up the stages, we are basically developing more meta thinking. As we move up the stages, our sense of self is expanding to include more people and more things. And as your sense of self expands, so does your ability to see the world through being cognition, your ability to see the world as it actually is, to have accurate perception. And as you move up the stages, the, the ego smog as uh, I think Maslow, no, not Maslow, someone coined the term ego smog, but basically the number one obstacle to to having an accurate perception of the world is your own personal self bias. That is the number one 
obstacle that prevents you from understanding how the world works. So as I've spoken about before, self-bias is literally you wanting the world to be a certain way because it serves your own survival agenda. That's, that is the root cause, the root cause of all delusion in the world is self-bias because people, you, want the world to be a certain way because it serves you. It serves your survival. And the mind will twist the world, will, will give you a deluded view of what the world is because that is what is most beneficial for you to survive as a physical self and also as an intellectual self, as an ego, as a conceptual self. So yeah, that's, um, that's basically why meta understanding is so important because meta understanding is the ability to step out of your selfish biased perspective and to actually observe and see, oh, how does this system that I'm observing, how does this actually work? I don't care about how I want it to work. I want to know how it actually works. And that, that, that allows me to go into some practices, some practical practices for you that are absolutely essential for developing your meta understanding. Now, number one, how to develop a accurate perception of reality. Number one, I have mindfulness meditation or Vipassana meditation. This is a Buddhist style of meditation doesn't have to be the Buddhist style, but any, any meditation that has a primary focus on mindfulness, check out my video, how meditation works. I go into so much more depth for exactly how and why this Vipassana meditation is so important. But basically what it does is Vipassana meditation is you're basically constantly trying to step back and observe the present moment impartially. That's the whole purpose of the meta of the meditation. I guess we can call it a meditation. <laughs> Vipassana meditation. So you're observing, let's say your thoughts. The purpose is to be aware of your thoughts and not judge them. Just observe them as they are. That is one of the number one ways to move into being perception. There's absolutely no way that you're going to have an accurate worldview without sufficient mindfulness. And that uh, it already is um, why met that already shows you why meta thinking is so rare because how many people do you know have a serious, rigorous meditation practice? It's, it's extremely rare. Number two, the how to develop meta thinking is having an open mind and having intellectual humbleness. Now, I, I talk about this a lot more in my video, how to acquire wisdom and also in its second part, why the secrets of the universe remain hidden. Those are my last two videos. This is extremely important because if you already think you know how the world works, then you won't be open to actually inquiring in and questioning your own worldview. Because we know that, let's move into the, the third point, contemplation. What you have to do to develop an accurate worldview is you have to deconstruct your current worldview. You have to empty your cup first. Because if I come on here and I start telling you about how reality works or whatever, you, your cup is already full. I can't pour any more liquid into it because it's already full of your own false beliefs 
and delusions and your own ideas of how the world works. So if I come and I, I say something that's valuable, but it contradicts against your worldview and it doesn't agree with your current perception of reality, you're going to dismiss it because for some reason you trust your current worldview. I don't know why. There's no reason to trust your current worldview. The only reason why you trust your current worldview is because your current worldview tells you that it's trustable. The reason why you trust your thoughts is because your thoughts told you to trust them. <laughs> so it's a catch 22. So you have to empty your cup. And the best way to do this is through open mindedness and also contemplation asking basic questions. So what is this life? Why? Why is there a life? What? There's, there's clearly stuff happening right now. But what is it? Cup? Look, I got a glass of water right here, which reminds me that I'm a little bit thirsty. Ah, but cup? What is this? Why is there a cup? How is, is this even a cup? That's a label that I'm projecting onto this thing. Now, since I've practiced years of mindfulness meditation, now I'm able to look at the cup and remove any thoughts about the cup. I can just look at this thing. What is this thing? Hmm. Huh. I don't know what this is. And, and as you look at this more, it's like, oh, it's not even a cup. It's like, oh, wow, that's so cool. The way the light like refracts off of like, that's how you develop accurate perception of the world is through contemplation. Contemplation requires you to remove any preconceived notions of how you think the world works and just look at your bare experience because this is all that we have that's true. Any concept that you have, that's up for debate. I can disprove a concept that, that you tell me about the world. But this direct experience here, I can't disprove it because this is what is the case. So we're going to have to do more contemplation if we want to develop an accurate perception of reality. Now, also the fourth way is to make a serious study and do serious research of meta models such as spiral dynamics and Cook Greuter ego development theory, both of which I got from actualize.org. Uh, you can look into Ken Wilber. Ken Wilber has a, also these types of meta models where they're, they're taking a, a big picture perspective. They're zooming out of the world. They're zooming out of reality and trying to make sense of what is going on here in life from a, a high elevation perspective. Now, most people, when they tell you about what they think is true, they're talking to you from a low elevation perspective. So they're, they're talking to you about the details of a certain problem. I can't even really think uh, of, of, of examples right now off the top of my head, but we're going to go into some examples a little bit later into this video. But uh, people, they have a low elevation per perspective. What in order to have an accurate perception of the world, you, you need to realize that having a big picture perspective, a grand global universal perspective is always going to be more accurate um, for giving yourself context in your life when talking about what life is about, what the purpose of life is, and what you exist as, as a person. <clears throat> okay. So I talked about the, uh, the elevated perspective and the reason why the elevated perspective is so necessary is because only from an elevated perspective can you be aware of your mind 
thinking, making meaning, and conceptualizing. And you can only develop an accurate perception of the world if you are aware of concepts. I talk about this in a lot more depth in my video, how to acquire wisdom. Now, this is my favorite part. Let's go into some practical examples of how meta thinking is useful. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to cut the camera because I'm worried that I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to quickly pause the video. Then I'm going to start right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go into some examples of practical examples of how and why meta thinking is so necessary. Okay, I'm back. So in this part now, we're going to go over some practical examples that involve real world problems. And I'm going to talk about how a regular person would think about these real world problems. And then we're going to talk about how someone who thinks from the meta perspective, how they think about the same problem. Now, a lot of uh, these, uh, a lot of these examples, you'll understand a lot more if you understand spiral dynamics. However, it's still very useful to hear me. Uh, basically, I'm going to play a role of someone who doesn't understand meta perspectives. And then I'm going to play a role of someone who does understand meta perspectives. And you'll see that the meta perspectives are a lot more valuable and a lot more useful for actually solving worldly issues. <clears throat> so let's start with a simple one. Debating with a Christian dogmatist or a Christian fundamentalist. So I don't know if you've ever had a debate with someone who is very extremely religious, a Christian who is 100% convinced that God, their Christian God is the only right way and that Jesus is, is the best and that all the other paths are garbage but and lies and delusion. Jesus is the only true way. And then they'll even quote Jesus and say, I am the way and the light as if Jesus meant, <laughs> as if Jesus meant it as that Christianity is the only proper religion. But most people when debating with this Christian dogmatist, most people, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you, you don't have any strong ties to religion and are pretty open-minded. Now a stage orange person, what most people uh, think about this religious person is that they are just a deluded cluck. They are immature. They don't think rationally enough. They don't think about the world from a rational enough perspective. They think what? The world was created in six 6,000 years ago and the world was created in seven days. That has been disproved by science that if this person was just a little bit more scientific, then uh, they would see that their religious perspective is all bullshit. That's how a stage orange person would think about it. A stage green person would probably think, oh, this... This poor religious fundamentalist, they're so lost in delusion. Um, maybe we should just give them hugs or maybe they need more love. Maybe we should make them try some mushrooms. Maybe we should let them smoke some weed so that they can loosen up. They're too strict. They, they need to chill out so that they can see that life is really just all about love and accepting your fellow man. That's what the green person would think. Now the yellow, the stage yellow is the birth of meta thinking. There's basically no meta thinking in any of the stages below stage yellow. That's why all of these stages are organized into tier one thinking. This is first tier thinking. Now, second tier thinking is in a completely different tier because they're able to employ meta thinking. So this is how the stage 
yellow person would think about that the Christian dogmatist, they would think, oh, okay, so this person is telling me that God and their religion and Jesus is the only way. Okay. Now, I don't think that's true. There are many, many uh, different religions. All of them seem to claim that they are the most accurate and they are the best. So whatever this, you know, science has disproved creationism. So yellow builds on top of orange and green. They still realize that the the blue person, the, the, or the, um, the religious person isn't being scientific enough, but then they're able to draw lessons from this person's thinking. So they think, so this person is thinking very dogmatically. Okay. How does this help me understand how the mind works? How does this help me understand how ideology works? How does this help me understand spiral dynamics? How does this help me understand the evolution of human consciousness? How does this conversation with this person help me practice being open-minded? How does, how does this conversation with this person help me practice remaining cool and level-headed and understanding his perspective and even potentially agreeing with him just so that I can make this religious fundamentalist feel comfortable so that I don't have to make them feel defensive so that I can actually, we can work together so we can work together in a, a positive way. So stage yellow understands that this person, this, this religious fundamentalist, which is stage blue on spiral dynamics. They understand that this person is at their level of consciousness and they can't move up to the other levels of consciousness because if they could, they would, but right now they're at stage blue. So as a yellow person, I'm aware of this. I'm aware of spiral dynamics and I'm able to relate to this person. I know, I understand this person's value system almost better than they do themselves. I understand that they value uh, the, the absolute truth. They value laws. They value order. They value following the rules. They value their family. They value their country. So I can speak with this person in a way where we can relate to each other and get along. And I can also learn about the nature of human mind in the process. Then uh, yellow can gently, very gently nudge this blue person towards orange without encroaching upon their territory or without telling them that they're a stupid religious nut that isn't scientific enough and doesn't do enough drugs, <laughs> right? So let's get into the next example of the Donald Trump phenomenon. So regardless of your political positions, I really don't care. I just want to make certain meta analysis of how people will see the Donald Trump phenomenon depending on their state of consciousness. So a blue person will, will say, oh, Donald Trump. Yeah, he, no, he, he's, he's, he's the best. He just wants to make America great again. And that's exactly what I want too. So they're kind of, they're on the, they're on the same page for the most part, or, or they'll think that, uh, he's rude and he's not nice and he doesn't follow the rules and, and he's vulgar. And I don't like that. I react against that. And then they'll, they'll vote against him. Orange will, will we'll probably, you, the first tier in general will think, oh, Donald Trump, this guy is such a goof. He doesn't know anything about, about politics. He's evil. He's, he's arrogant. He doesn't understand uh, <laughs> uh, anything, basically. And um, 
they will, the first tier, especially stage orange and stage green, will demonize uh, Donald Trump and will demonize people who support Donald Trump. They'll make them seem stupid. They'll make them seem evil. Now, a meta thinker, a stage yellow person, will say, okay, so this Donald Trump phenomenon is super weird. I don't know why so many people are supporting this guy who clearly doesn't have any complex understanding of how a country works or how it should be run. But why is this the case? Why do so many people support this man? What does this teach me about ideology? How, how can I learn about how a human mind can be so deluded? How can someone believe that Donald Trump is the best thing for the USA? Like how can someone actually believe that? And again, I, I'm Canadian. I, I don't really care about, <laughs> I don't have any skin in the game. I don't care about whether or not Donald Trump is good or not. I don't care about what you think. I'm just trying to make a meta analysis that this, this man doesn't know what he's doing. And um, I don't know how people think he could know what he's doing. So as a yellow person, I would try and put myself into the shoes of a Donald Trump supporter. I would try and put myself into the shoes of Donald Trump. I would use spiral dynamics to help me understand. I would use uh, my understanding of epistemology and dogma and ego to understand. Now, I, I understand all these meta psychological topics, so now I can make an accurate analysis of what is actually happening in the Donald Trump phenomenon. And then from that position of cool understanding, then I can go and I can make a meaningful change. Next point, let's look at... Um, Let's look at tension in the Middle East. So uh, there's been, you know, tons of tension in, in the Middle East between different religious groups for hundreds of years. And um, a lot of people, a lot of first tier people, especially stage orange, will say like, oh, look at all those, those Muslims. They, they don't. They're so uh, undeveloped. They're, they're so uncivilized. They're all terrorists. Uh, we should just bomb them or, or we should just invade them and then force them to have a democracy. Or stage green will think, all oh, these, these poor uh, people, they're, they're at war with each other. You know, I think they just need more peace and love. We should go... Uh, over to uh, to ISIS and we should give them hugs and we should give them teddy bears and flowers because um, that's that's what they need they just need more peace and love and they need more acceptance of of other people and now other races that's what stage green will think and then stage yellow will think okay wait a second so these people in the Middle East are occupying Spiral dynamics, stage purple and red and blue. All of these stages are extremely early in the human psychological development. And they're very polarizing. They're very violent, aggressive. Um, they're very totalitarian. They're very uh, uh, selfish. Um, selfish meaning that they're um, focused on their own personal survival more than they are the well-being of their fellow men. And there, there's many reasons for this. The reason why is because their actual environment is very um, hostile. They, they have a hostile environment. So they have to turn to something like Islam so that they can have a sense of peace, a sense of order, a sense of direction. And also the religion serves as a unifying force that brings together 
many uh, disparate people who otherwise wouldn't have anything in common. So if I wanted to help the Middle East, I wouldn't bomb them or I wouldn't assassinate their leaders or I wouldn't go and give them hugs and teddy bears. Um, but I would probably, <laughs> um, first of all, it, it, you kind of got to let them figure their own stuff out because you can't force them to grow. But I would basically just do my best uh, to, to, if, to supply um, basic needs to, to, to help them build their infrastructure, to help them with their economy so that more and more people can live a comfortable life. Um, there, there's a, a, deep, a deep study about people who went to uh, the Middle East to teach them spiral dynamics. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really study it that, that much, but um, apparently it was working. Apparently it was actually helping people gain more understanding of each other. Um, but uh, that's not happening anymore because uh, it, it was the funding was cut in 2008. Okay, uh, let's look at some more examples of how meta thinking is useful for real life topics. Now let's look at the legalization of psychedelic substances. So how would a stage blue person think about this? What? Drugs? No, drugs. Get them away. Drugs are bad. They're evil and the devil made them so guess so we don't want those that's how the stage blue person would think about it the stage orange person would say oh these these psychedelic substances what well, they're just like drugs like heroin and cocaine and the it they'll just cause you to hallucinate they'll just cause you to develop psychosis and jump off a bridge that's how the stage orange person will see the psychedelics. I actually made a whole 55 minute video called how to get the most out of your psychedelic experience by understanding spiral dynamics. So for a 55 minute, much more in depth and probably more interesting explanation of uh, how different spiral stages view psychedelics, then you can check out that video. Uh, basically, the, the green person will say, yeah, legalize it, legalize all the psychedelics so we can all get in a circle and, uh, and sing Kumbaya and do mushrooms and everyone will be happy together, which isn't the case. And then yellow will basically say, okay, so most of the population is at blue and orange. And these stages aren't ready to take a psychedelic substance. So how can we slowly introduce and educate the masses about the potential dangers and also the great benefits of the, what would happen to the entire society if we legalized psychedelics. But um, that would require a lot of work. We can't just legalize them all. We need to... We need to do it methodically, strategically, with systemic understanding. Next example is uh, global warming. How do we solve global warming? Well, um, the uh, <laughs> stage blue and the stage orange people will solve it by saying, "What global warming? I don't. It's not that warm. I swear. I swear. Yesterday was almost minus ten here in Canada. So uh, there's there's no global warming." Or uh, stage orange, even if they do admit to global warming, they don't, they're not going to do anything about it if it is bad for business. Stage green will say, everyone has to go vegan and we have to ban plastic bags and we have to ban gasoline and we have to ban, like, we have to, we, we have to force everyone to um, be more eco-conscious. And there's some truth to that perspective because in 30 to 50 years, there's going to be a lot of irreversible ecological damage to the world. Um, but stage yellow realizes that um, most of the population is at blue and orange and blue and orange isn't ready to 
do anything about global warming. So what needs to happen is we need to devise systems to collectively move the consciousness of the entire global population or even just the Western population. So we need to devise systems such as this video that I'm making here to collectively move the global consciousness upwards towards green so that even so that first of all our people will vote for the politicians who are serious about taking actual climate change action such as much more regulation on big corporations we need tons more regulation um we need more education we need more funding for for a systems such as uh more eco friendly systems we need taxes that benefit businesses who are uh more eco friendly all that all that kind of stuff but the only way we're going to get that the only way we're going to get that is if we move the collective consciousness up towards green and the way that we do that is first of all by realizing that everything is moving at the exact pace that it should be moving so we're not trying to force anyone to to grow but we are trying to facilitate people's growth upwards on the spiral and the way that this happens is by generally solving the people's basic needs because when people don't have to work 50 hour weeks then they have a lot more time to be comfortable to enjoy life and to develop meta understanding this the, the meta understanding is only possible when your basic needs are sufficiently solved and we solve people's basic needs by implementing more socialistic policies uh that allow younger people and middle class and elderly people to live a comfortable life to have access to food water shelter at much much more affordable prices so that they can devote their time and energy to developing themselves as a human being instead of just working 50 hour weeks at the grocery store because that will keep you in a low state of consciousness and then from that low state of consciousness you're more likely to vote for the wrong politician such as some of the conservative candidates here in Canada uh that are going to cut education funding that are going to uh cut uh regulation for eco uh eco-friendly business practice so when you vote for those type of people then um we're not going to get any closer to solving the global problems the the democracy only works if the collective consciousness of the masses is relatively high the masses are relatively educated um which is why you know voting for someone who cuts education funding is like the opposite of what you want to do if you want to grow as a a species or as a as as a race <laughs> Okay so another example is um how the different stages make career choices and how meta thinking is necessary to make uh a, 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 an educated career choice. So stage orange chooses their career based on whatever makes them the most money. Regardless of how hard they have to work, regardless of how it negatively impacts the world they just choose whatever career it makes them the most money stage green now wants their career to help the world they want their career to have meaning to have uh to help other people which is nice um but now stage yellow someone who is good at meta thinking 
is able to identify their own personal values, their own personal strengths. They're able to identify the purpose of their life, to have a, a strong, clear life purpose. And they're able to almost create a career for themselves that is in line with their top values and is also going to be helping the world, um, but can also realistically make them some money. And uh, the last uh, the last example I want to talk about is greedy business. So this is uh, if, if you study uh, politics or, or whatever, then you know that the the number one thing that's holding Western uh, Western uh, civilization back is unregulated businesses forming an og oligarchy, which means that the the richest, most powerful corporations have way a much too large share of the power and are able to influence the lawmaking process in ways which are beneficial for the big rich people, but not beneficial for the middle class. So this is basically the number one problem that uh, exists in Western civilization. And already a lot of people don't know this because most people are at stage. Um, most people don't like think about it. Like they don't know like what's going on. People just think the number one problem is like, Muslim people or they're like like coronavirus like that's the problem of the world no the problem is that the uh, the greedy corporations have too much share of the power because our government does not regulate their ability to form a monopoly over everything and enslave the the middle class basically so a stage orange person thinks about greedy stage orange doesn't even think about greedy business as being a problem because they their entire mindset is libertarian every man for themselves this uh <laughs> they, they are the, actually the type of person who would create a greedy business that exploits the rest of the population the stage green people will think of the greedy business as evil greedy oligarchs that are all pigs and and they they uh they ruin society and they're all heartless cold evil pricks and we should just assassinate all the business leaders or we should ban capitalism or like we should ban business whoop my camera just moved let's fix it whoop. okay mm, let's fix it again Okay, where well, obviously that doesn't work. And then the stage yellow person will have a much more nuanced view, such as, um, okay, these, these greedy capitalists, these greedy business owners, the reason why they are the way they are is because we have ineffective systems that first of all, regulate their ability to exploit the rest of the masses. And also their state of consciousness isn't high enough to recognize that what they're doing is wrong and is ultimately not leading to their own personal happiness or the well-being of the whole. Um, so in order to, to change this, in order to fix this problem, we need to raise the collective consciousness of the masses so that we collectively can vote for the proper people uh, who also are higher consciousness because you vote for people who rep mirror and represent your state of consciousness. And if you're at one of the lower stages, you basically have a less complex, less useful and um, less effective solution for this problem. So as we raise the collective consciousness of the masses, then we also allow ourselves to, to vote in the most <laughs> conscious politicians who are going to actually make 
systemic lasting change. Whoops, my camera cut out. Uh, basically what I was saying is that as you raise the consciousness of humanity, uh, of the masses, then they are more likely to vote in the more conscious politicians who make the proper systemic changes and actually solve the complex issues that we have with their complex thinking. However, most people don't think very complex. Most people don't have a very high level of cognitive development according to spiral dynamics. And this causes them to vote in politicians that appeal to their low consciousness values. And then these individuals who appeal to their low consciousness values also don't have enough complexity of thinking to uh, implement uh, policies that actually make lasting <laughs> changes and meaningful changes in the world. So that, that about uh, ties up our examples. Now, I would like to leave you with uh, a very inspiring quote uh, that I got from uh, Cook Greuter's uh, Ego Development Theory, where she's talking about uh, the characteristics of this tier two stage that is able to employ meta thinking. It's one of my favorite quotes. Here it is. These tier two thinkers, she calls them strategists. They also recognize natural hierarchies in life. They're no longer afraid of acknowledging that some members of society are better equipped for certain tasks or more cognitively differentiated than others. The strategist embraces the notion that all human beings deserve respect, but also knows that not all opinions and perspectives deserve the same attention. Unlike pluralists, strategists can now prioritize among a multitude of voices because they recognize that some views are based on better evidence as well as being more comprehensive and fruitful than others. Now, this is the last point I wanted to leave you with, is that tier two and meta thinking recognizes the importance of natural hierarchies and is able to discern which perspectives are better, which perspectives are more conscious, which perspectives are more comprehensive, which perspectives are more fruitful, which ones are more useful and more loving than others. Now, spiral dynamic stage green is what most of the Canadian population here is in. And whenever I like to share my own opinion or something, right, my, my opinion on a certain topic, people will, will, they do this stage green thing where they're like, well, Adam, that's just your opinion. And then this person, this other person's opinion is just as valid and just as valuable. And then this other person's opinion is just as valuable and everyone's opinion is just valuable. And then we can just all hold hands in a circle and then we're, we'll, all, we'll all write down um, what everyone has to say. And then we'll just, and that's that. And that's, and that's what we do. We, we have no way to know whose opinion is the best opinion because green is the birth of the understanding of relativism and realizing that the world is seen always from a subjective perspective. So green doesn't understand yet how to discern between which perspectives are better than other perspectives. And this is a hallmark of a, a tier two thinker, a yellow and above thinker they're able to make the discernment that yes, everyone's opinion is valid. Everyone's opinion is, deserves respect basically, but not everyone's opinion is equally useful or not everyone's opinion is equally comprehensive or equally informed so that if I wanted to make a lasting change in the structure of society, let's say, not anyone's opinion is valid. There are some people who are a lot more informed, 
Some people are a lot more uh, comprehensive in, in their thinking. Some people have a lot more expertise in this certain area. So, you know, I, I have a lot of arguments with my parents and, and stuff. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk, about, uh, talk about psychedelics and how psychedelics are a useful tool for consciousness growth. And, uh, you know, they'll say, well... Adam, you know, I, I, under, I understand, you know, I understand your, your perspective, um, but my perspective is that uh, psychedelics are dangerous and that you don't have to use them to uh, raise your consciousness. And now, of course, that's partially true, but in terms of accuracy, in terms of having an accurate perception of what is actually the case, um, my perspective is more informed, it, it's, more, it's more comprehensive, and it takes into consideration a lot uh, more depth of research that I've personally done in my own life. So Yellow is able to recognize when a person is more educated and when a person is more psychologically developed, and they tend to trust uh, their... Uh, they, uh, they recognize the difference between higher perspectives and lower perspectives. The lower perspectives are basically ridden with self-bias and you can smell it from a mile away, but you have to develop your meta-thinking abilities in order to, in order to develop your, your, your sense of smell for self-bias. And the higher perspectives have a lot less self-bias. They still are susceptible to self-bias, but um, they are more interested in having accurate perception and meta-understanding of the systems of what is causing the world to, and the reality to work the way it does. Uh, and they have a lot less care or need for it to be a certain way to fit their own worldview. So I hope my, my camera doesn't run out of battery or it already ran out of storage in halfway through filming this video, but I'm basically done here. Thank you so much for listening. If you stuck this far, congratulations. I guess you like hearing me talk about spiral dynamics, the evolution of human consciousness, uh, meta understanding, meta thinking, and uh, uh, meditation and all these types of topics. If you're interested, then I definitely consider subscribing to this channel. These are the types of videos that I make. And uh, I have a lot of resources in the description where you can study spiral dynamics in more depth. Uh, you can study my own videos that talk about um, practical techniques for developing meta thinking. So you can check out those videos, links in the description more videos like this on the way. I'm trying to uh, develop a system for myself to upload more consistently. It's just that uh, I feel uh, it's very difficult to put together a lot of these ideas in my mind. And um, I feel like I have to have a certain level of embodiment before I can even talk about the really woke stuff. So... I'm working on myself. It's a very difficult path. I spend a lot of time just uh, in suffering, to be honest. Um, but slowly I'm developing myself as a human being. I'm developing my understanding of the world and I'm sharing that with you. So thank you so much for listening. Give this video a like. Check out the resources in the, in the description and stay tuned for the next one.